This is a big reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. We know the effects of child abuse and trauma, yet it's still happening every single day, and nobody wants to talk about it. These people do not get plea deals, and we need to hammer them with the full extent of the law. Throughout this whole time, I've never told anybody my story. In combination between the two of us, about 10 years of, of molestation and abuse, even being in the 82nd Airborne Division, like running and gunning, going to Afghanistan, going jumping out of planes, doing all the cool shit, people are wondering why Sergeant Gale has a temper, or why Sergeant Gale is depressed, or why Sergeant Gale, and this whole time I'm just like battling with like an identity crisis. As close as I'd ever been to killing myself, right when my son was born. What's crazy about that too is my story is not uncommon. The way that I have overcome all of it and be the man that I am today, that is the uncommon piece. It just attests to the power of the human spirit as long as you work on it. That 12, 13 year old Seth wouldn't believe that he'd be here today. Over the course of the, the the trial and everything like that, this is a big reason why I'm doing what I'm doing and trying to fix some things is because the the uh, prosecutors offered him a plea deal. Mm. So he he eventually admits guilt to between me and, and and Jacob. In combination between the two of us, about ten years of of molestation and abuse. What's crazy about that too is he ran a haunted house in his hometown of Bluffton on Main Street. So every year he would hand out candy to thousands of kids who would come through his haunted house, probably looking for prospects, right? So he goes, he gets a, he gets charged with 11 felony counts. He takes a plea deal and is only hit with four of them. The fact that the prosecutors and the, and the attorneys or the DA or whoever the hell decided that a plea deal was okay blows my mind. Hmm. I would like to say that these people do not get plea deals and we need to hammer them with the full extent of the law. You yes. know what I'm saying? He got a 10-year sentence for 10 years of abuse, okay? He got 10 years of free health care, TV, lodging, food, and now I'm left to deal with the consequences. You know what I'm saying? He, he's not dealing with any of this. In fact, um, nine years into his sentence, he died in 2019. Mm. So his story ended. You know, mine's kind of still going. Um, yeah, I reported him. He went to He went to prison. I graduate high school, joined the army, you know, served eight years in the army, been all around the world, got married, had a couple kids, got out of the army, got into the construction industry. And throughout this whole time, I've never told anybody my story. You know, mm. I've, I've hid it from everybody, even being in the 82nd Airborne Division, like the most elite army, you know, regular army division you know with all these rough tough guys running and gunning going to afghanistan going jumping out of planes doing all the cool shit and this whole time i'm just like battling with like an identity crisis you know just holding it in yeah and people are wondering why sergeant gale has a temper or why sergeant gale is depressed or why sergeant gale has all these issues or why he's an asshole or you know whatever you know why i I just couldn't get along with regular people. Why I didn't fit in with all the boys, you know, and it just because my my heart and my brain are kind of fucked up. And you know, I get out of the army and battling depression really hard um, during my exit from the army, and was as close as I'd ever been to killing myself right when my son was born. Thankfully, my wife and my kids kind of pulled me out of that. Mm. And when I got out of the army. I got into the construction industry. I worked for the third largest home builder in America. And I was in my first year there, I was the construction manager of the year. The following year, I was sent out to Las Vegas to the International Builder Show. And I received the Chairman's Award from the National Association of Home Builders just for my work, not only in building homes, but also in, in advocating for veterans and construction. And when I received that award, I was on a stage in Las Vegas, right? And I'm talking to a room full of people who make too much damn money. And I had this whole speech wrote out. I had this whole speech wrote out to say all the shit that I had been through, you know, when I got up on that stage, I knew who people saw. They saw this man who probably looks like anybody else who lived this very average life, you know, who, who happened to do really good in construction. And I wanted to tell those people so bad that they had no idea the, the amount of pain and suffering and and fight that I had in my body to get through what I had gone through, you know. And I scrapped the speech at the last second and all I kind of did was say thank you to everybody.
and I wish I would have kind of gone. That's the, maybe the only regret that I have is not is not dropping that having that mic drop moment of mm-hmm. like, you know, this this is more this award means more to me than it does anybody else in this room, and I and I can assure you that because that 12, 13 year old Seth wouldn't believe that he'd be here today, you know? And so I go home, but that, that was kind of like the catalyst of me writing my book. Hmm. Cause I had wrote out my story multiple times and deleted it. Cause I was like, this shit don't matter. Like nobody gives a shit. Yeah. And when I reached the point of like my, so what, like there is a beautiful life on the other side of this. The fact that I've been married for eight years, it's a miracle. I've never been addicted to drugs. I've never been an alcoholic. I've I've actually never received any formal therapy, which I'm not necessarily proud of that, but I'm just the reason why I say that is it, it just attests to the power of the human spirit mm. as long as you work on it, you know. This resiliency thing that you that that all people have as long as you build it and work on it, you can accomplish some incredible things and and that's what I've gone on to do with my life now. And and to say that I'll be a published author here in 4 or 5 months, it's mind-blowing, you mm. know. My story is not about me. Like I said, my story is not un, my, my my story is not uncommon. The way that I have overcome all of it and to be the man that I am today, that is the uncommon piece. And I can speak personally to all of the feelings. I can speak to all of that 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 therapists and your advocates speak about at this, you know, state houses or in books or on podcasts. Or people will say it's a therapist. They don't know what I've been through. You're right, but they they do understand the psychology of it, and I can confirm that it's real. What they're saying is real. The feeling that they're talking about and what it does to your brain and your heart, it's real because I can reflect on it, and I can look back even just six months ago. I can look back at myself six months ago, and I can see the things that I was doing because of it. Even as a father, my kids are – I was thinking about it on the way here. My kids are six and four. When they were first born – I was a completely different father then mm. than I am now. And I, I think I was a great father then, but I didn't understand love for children. I didn't understand love for babies. I I always thought that it's a fucking baby, man. Like it's not hmm. like it's not a big deal, dude. Just they're whatever, they're gonna grow up. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. You know? Where in reality, nurturing and affection is one of the most important things you can mm. do for babies. Human connection, nurturing, and affection, those those things will actually inhibit a child's growth, like physically prevent them from growing if they do not receive it. And I didn't I don't think I neglected my children, but I probably could have been more compassionate mm. about the situation. But to that point, people who go through what I've gone through, like I said with my own mom, she didn't have that maternal instinct that most moms have. Why? Because she she did not experience it herself. So she did not know how to be a mother because she did not have a good mother and a father in her life, more than likely. I don't know for fact, but that's likely the case. So once again, my, my story is not about me. It's about the, the ability for me to explain it to people, to protect other people. And like I said, with the ACE study thing, we know the effects of child abuse and trauma. We know all of that, yet it's still happening every single day. And these horrific things are happening every single day, and nobody wants to talk about it. 